how do we celebrate our clients' survival strategies without romanticizing or pedestalizing um, what they, how their adaptations, right? So sometimes we would see our clients um, engage in certain behaviors to adapt to, to homophobia or transphobia or, or even racism. And we may say things like, you know, oh my God, that is so brave. That's so wonderful. That is so, but for the client, they may not exactly perceive it in a similar fashion. And we have to be so careful. So I, I want us to go back to this whole notion of epistemological hybridism. And that whenever we are de describing a client's behavior and we are pronouncing that or naming that for the client, we may actually be practicing epistemological hegemony where we are imposing our ways of knowing on the client. So what I may say, and, and this is just my offering, what I may say is, you know, this behavior that you use to take care of you, these actions, I want you to just kind of craft those actions into an image for me. What do you see? And if those actions could name what they're doing, how would they name it? How would they describe it? So what I'm doing, helping the client to see what their behaviors are, these behaviors, I'm helping them to kind of shape it for themselves. And I want the behaviors to name themselves. I want, I want to give the client that power to define you know, because uh, what I may call brave, a client may see us totally different. And I think that is part of how we open up voice for the clients. That's how we practice empowerment work as, as well. That's how we begin the social justice work, even in the therapeutic setting.